Welcome to another episode of Letters from Home on this Saturday, June 26th. My name is Ken Baldwin and I'm the Executive Director of the St. Paul Center and it is a pleasure for me to share with you a few thoughts on today's scripture reading. But first I want to encourage you, subscribe to our super duper YouTube channel, click on the bell and you will get our daily videos automatically from our amazing short cinematic films to Dr. Han's amazing insights and our scripture scholars daily reading reflections. We hope to bring the word of God to as many people as possible, and we're so grateful for you being with us on this journey. The readings today come from Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 15, and from the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 17. Together, they all highlight two all-stars from Scripture. You know we're getting close to the Major League Baseball All-Star Game, And today's readings describe two amazing men in Scripture that show us what God can do when we trust in Him and when we love our neighbor. The Lord encourages us to have hope that He could take the most desperate and hopeless situations and work miracles. And our first reading is from the book of Genesis, and it tells of an encounter between Abraham and three visitors. Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, O Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to a young man who prepared it quickly. We know Abraham is one of the great figures of all of Scripture. The father of all who believe and his heroics are remembered throughout scripture. But this reading really shows us his love and action for his fellow man. Bishop Neck's practical commentary does a great job of of reflecting and noting this point. And Bishop says, Abraham's faith was living and active through love. He loved God above all things. We hear how he loves his neighbor and he again proved this by his behavior to the three strangers. Abraham is this rich shepherd prince to whom Almighty God had made such great promises. He ran to meet the three strangers, bowed at their feet, and served them while they were eating. Now, Abraham Abraham had servants in abundance, but he does this himself, and as a reward for this virtue, God promised him that in a year he should have a son. Now, who are these three men? Well, one of them is the Lord, and two of them are angels, we later find out. I also want to just share really quickly, this reading has one of the funniest, most humorous endings. Uh, we We hear this great exchange between Sarah and the angels. Sarah says, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, no, but you did laugh. So quick reminder, if you ever have two angels appear to you, do not lie to them. They already know what you have done. Now today's gospel from Matthew, chapter 8, verses 5 to 17, features an unlikely player that steps up to the plate and delivers a major home run. A Roman centurion, an outsider, a Gentile, who commanded a hundred soldiers comes in today and is just an amazing example. Let's hear a little portion of today's gospel. So, when Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. Now when Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, truly I tell you, With no one in Israel have I found such faith. Now, St. Luke does note that the centurion was favorable to the Jewish nation and responsible for building a synagogue in Capernaum. 
When we hear these words, Lord, I am not worthy, these words just drip with humility and faith so much that Jesus truly marveled at his faith. And this exchange is so powerful that these words are literally have been adopted into the Roman liturgy. Now, for you and I, what is our mindset when we utter these very same words at Mass? One church father notes that what we're stating is that we're unworthy to receive the Eucharist, we are asking to be cleansed of personal faults, and we are placing our faith in the healing power of God's Word. And remember, we had just heard in Genesis how Abraham's compassion for his fellow men is so important, and we see similar virtues in action in this gospel passage exemplified by the centurion. I mean, do you have any idea how busy a centurion would have been? I have six kids under the age of 11, but I literally wonder what it would have been like taking care of 100 Roman soldiers. I mean, I think most of us would have maybe called an Uber driver, you know, bring the slave to Jesus, maybe Uber Deluxe so he's comfortable, but this centurion personally goes to meet Jesus himself on his slave's behalf. And here, Bishop Next has another great reflection. He said, the centurion exudes the virtue of compassion as he had bought the slave for money, and if he would have died, could easily have just bought a new one. Because we learn he's very rich, for he had, but he had a kind and compassionate heart and was full of pity for the slave who was suffering such acute pain and wanting to help him. His kindness of heart showed to great advantage in comparison to the scribes and Pharisees. Compassion made him seek help from Jesus. And the centurion had clearly heard of the great miracles that Jesus was working by God's grace. And what he had heard engendered in him a firm belief that Jesus was the Messiah whom the Jews expected and was able to heal him without even coming to him. Faith made this centurion humble. He felt his own sinfulness and nothingness acutely in the presence of Jesus, the Holy and Almighty One who, like when Peter felt it at the miraculous catch of fish, when he said, Lord, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. So the servant, so the centurion intercedes for his servant, and these prayers were not made in vain, as Jesus availed to them and cured the servant on the spot. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May we pray this prayer each and every day. Take it to heart. Let's show more compassion to those in our lives, especially those that we find it most difficult on a daily basis. And Lord, we just thank you for these examples of Abraham and the centurion. And just want to say thank you again for joining us today on this, this great day. God bless you. Make sure you subscribe and stay in touch for another great episode from the Letters from Home tomorrow. God bless you all.